donation. Uh, here we go. Here is his first request. Oh, God, son of a bitch. A guide to lifelong allyship. Oh, God, these TEDx talks. <laughs> oh, I may pull muscles. I have good news and bad news. I have no idea what race this woman is. I guess Native American. Good news is, after watching this talk, you can download a certificate. Oh, she's um, Mexican. Fucking wonderful. Making you an official ally, acting in solidarity with marginalized groups of people. Um, I would rather fucking wear a goddamn AIDS-infected... Uh, I, I, ah, fuck it. Bad news is, that's not true. <laughs> Allyship isn't an identity you can obtain like a, like a Costco membership. It's a lifelong journey, and it must begin in the body. I learned this in 2007. So do I have to let a black guy come inside my asshole or what? Teen, during a speech by black. believing with your whole body that each of us does deserve to live and love equally and to live those beliefs everywhere from you can right now fuck off and fuck you conversations to organizational structures to government policies my name is Catherine Hernandez and I'm a writer after surviving abuse of course you are, because we all need more useless jobs. From a theater institution where my stories as a brown woman were devalued and dismissed. Wait, 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 what? My name is Catherine Hernandez, and I'm a writer. After surviving abuse from a theater institution where... So a theater institution abused you. How? My stories as a brown woman were devalued and dismissed. Maybe you just wrote shitty stories. I committed to decolonizing my practice. You're out of your fucking mind. I mean, I don't mind a little crazy in a chick, but this chick is up to about 110. For over two decades, I have worked to empower marginalized artists to trust their ability to tell their truth in a world that focuses on white, able-bodied, heterosexual lives. Well, let's see. About 92% of the population is heterosexual. And the company is, a country is 70% white, so yeah, it would stand to reason a majority of the fucking stories that we tell are about those two things. Fuck you. Let's try an experiment. If you've witnessed a racialized person being harassed and you didn't intervene, pat your head. Fine. Because I didn't give a shit. If, it disabled, if you witnessed the Black Lives Matter protests and you did nothing, feel your hands on your belly. Oh, no. Not only did I not do anything, I was actively against it. I wanted all those motherfuckers arrested. By the way, how well did Black Lives Matter work out in the end? Seems like a pretty corrupt fucking organization. you were too uncomfortable to follow any of these instructions, try blinking your eyes. No, I could follow every damn one of them. This is why all of you are terrified of me. Because I don't give a fuck. What's in 
sensations are you feeling right now? Uh, nothing. I am feeling absolutely nothing. Except I need to do more uh, squats. I'll be right back. Yeah. <laughs> These are real and by design in ways that may seem insignificant. White supremacy affects our bodies in substantial ways. It teaches people from birth to disconnect from their bodies and from the painful truth around them. Some lives are valued more than others. When I have these conversations with privileged people, I see a range of reactions, a reddening of the face, like you've been found out, a tightening of the lips, not me. I need facts. Prove my privilege to me. Uh, no, I, I don't say prove my privilege to me. I say my privilege doesn't exist, and here's how I can prove that it doesn't exist. So, checkmate, bitch! <laughs> I guarantee you, if I debated you for 30 fucking minutes, you'd be fucking crying. This was a question I explored while writing my second novel. Oh, great. She wrote a novel that nobody fucking read. Um, I don't do any of that shit when somebody is full of shit. And I know this because you're a Canadian living in Canada. You're not fucking oppressed! Fuck you! Almost a year ago, I saw four cop cars surround one unarmed black woman. They handcuffed her over a traffic violation. Why do I think, uh, and I have not heard of this incident because I don't really follow Canadian news. Why do I think she did a lot of shit to escalate it? I felt frozen in denial. To move past this, I had to repeat the lines from the creed over and over again. I... Oh my God. So it is a religion. So leftism is actually a fucking religion. What she did was literally what monks used to do way back in the day. They would actually go through town shirtless and be whipping the shit out of themselves with a cat of nine tails and basically repenting of their sins. That's what she's doing. Unfortunately, her tits are not that impressive, so keep your fucking shirt on. I was witnessing police brutality. Uh, bitch, you ain't gonna stop shit. You're like, what, five foot three, five foot two? You look like you're maybe 130 pounds. You ain't stopping dick. If men want to oppress somebody, you ain't stopping us. Moving on to the next line. When the oppressed tell me I'm wrong, I open my heart and change. It takes humility to be checked on our privilege. Yeah, I will accept when I'm wrong when somebody can actually prove to me that I'm wrong. Most of the time, I have literally... Okay, I have literally been on this program and have asked people to give me three examples of when I was, let's say, racist. Which racism is, I'm, I'm condemning an entire group. And I can't back it up with facts. It's just based purely on skin. Not a one motherfucking one of them can do it. I will happily listen to their argument, but I'm also going to talk back. I'm not just going to accept their versions of events. Again, fuck you. Who taught us that our opinions, our actions, our presence? Because again, I don't go after women as a group. I don't go after black people as a group. Mexicans, Latinos, whatever. Asians, whites. I don't go after them as a group. I go after specific people who happen to be white, black, gay, straight, whatever. But look, I don't give a fuck. I don't think the, the government should be involved in people's marriage. If a bunch of fucking women want to marry one fucking dude and he is dumb enough 
to spend his evening going to five different fucking bedrooms. Well, then, you know what? They do them. I don't give a shit. If I was a polygamist, I'd, I'd tell all the women, no, I'm not going to your your rooms. You can all come in to my fucking bed, those who want to be in there, but I'm sleeping in my fucking bed. Let's do a gesture that embodies that line. When change is led by the oppressed, I move aside and uplift. Except just one problem with your premise. Nobody is fucking oppressed. At all, point blank, period. It may feel empty, passing energy to others, but it's a fraction of what oppressed people feel when their identities, their labor, are stolen. Let's do all the movements while saying the creed. Are you ready? All right, I've done enough. The $5 gets you 10 minutes. I'm not doing the rest of this shit. Fuck you.